Good morning, everybody. Resale Rabbit here. It is Monday. Uh, I've got some listing to do today, and I need to do inventory for eBay, so we're gonna do that. Inventory is something that a lot of YouTubers don't really talk about. It's not uncommon for me to have items on the shelf that actually aren't listed for sale. So this is why we do inventory. What typically happens is maybe I forgot to do good till cancel, I accidentally did a 30 day listing or listings just disappear. I have no idea. But I'll have stuff on the shelf that isn't listed. So all I do is I go through every single item on the shelf and look it up on eBay in my active listings. I can do that right on my phone just to make sure there's a listing for it. I'm probably gonna find a few items that don't have listings. What I like to do is if I have like 20 of an item, I'll list 18. That way if there's an issue, I can send an extra item or replace an item or you know maybe one of the items is broken and I didn't notice, instances like that. Well, once I sell those 18, there might still be two left on the shelf that I forget to relist. So there's a lot of times where I'll have extra inventory. It's a long process to go through. I've got like 530 something listings, but it's um, something that you can do over the course of a period of time. Usually once every few months, I'll start going through inventory and I'll just do like one section of shelving at a time. So I'm only putting 15 minutes or so a day into it. And I do it over the course of a week, week and a half or so. So it's not that big of a deal, but no one really talks about it. And it's something that you definitely wanna to do to verify that it's there. If you have an organization problem, you also might wanna look at your listings and see if you can find the item to make sure nothing went missing. That never really happens for me. I never have an instance where something sells and I can't find it or it's just gone. It's happened in the past, but not in a long time. So if that was an issue, I would do that as well. I wonder if they do the Humpty Dance every day when they're driving. If I drove that truck for a living, it would be digital underground every single day. The Humpty eggs are your eggs, do the hump. So here's how I'm doing inventory. I'm just doing one section of shelving at a time. And um, this I just listed, so I know that's in there. Uh, this I just listed. Here, some fate dice. So all I'm gonna do is go into eBay, click active, F-A-T-E, I spelt that wrong. This is very difficult with my left hand. Search, and look, first one, no listing. So we're gonna toss that in the box that needs to be listed. Now let's look up these. B-R-O-T-H-E-R. And we've got them right there. So all I'm doing is making sure they're still here and I'm checking every single item on this section of shelving. Tomorrow I'll do that section, the next day I'll do that section, and I'll work my way all the way through this stuff. So it should probably take a week and a half or so, maybe 10, 15 minutes per day. And I mean, stuff like this just, if it's not listed, it's not making me any money. So it's clearing some space on shelves. And this might sell for, I mean, it's not gonna go for much, five or 10 bucks, but it's a sale. So this section is complete. I found four items that weren't listed. So I'll just toss them in the box of stuff that needs to be listed. So I don't like change. I just got a letter here from my attorney. Uh, I guess he is closing his practice and moving to New Orleans to be an entertainment lawyer in the area of music, law, and management. Interesting, because he's a, corporate attorney here so anyways he is forwarding me the information of another attorney fun i enjoyed working with him so uh yeah that's that's a thing all right i'm gonna go get some food all right so i really didn't do a lot interesting today and it's only 3 48 i'm gonna call it an early day since you know i did work this weekend but i did have 13 sales and uh, we're gonna pull some orders. I'll show you what it is. 14 actually, forgot about one that actually isn't on eBay. I'll, I'll show you that. So 14 sales. First thing is first, this Fossil Wallet Charger uh, was purchased by a viewer. If you remember, I got this in Milwaukee the other day uh, from another viewer actually. It was a throw in with a whole bunch of other stuff. William bought it for $20 uh, shipped and he bought it, we didn't put it on eBay or anything so. No eBay fees on that. We'll get that shipped out for you today. Thanks, William. Next sale 
was this Hot Wheels bowling shirt. This actually sold while I was filming on Friday. Um, by the way, this is the weekend sales. So Hot Wheels bowling shirt, it is new with tags. There were no comps, so I just listed it for 100. It sat listed for a couple of months, took an offer for 50. Got another one here. This was a good sale, two Sony microphones. I got $179 for the pair. About a year ago, I was at a thrift store in West Lafayette, Indiana, and I spent $100 on a professional camcorder, similar to the one I sold just a few days ago, uh, the DV tapes, it was a Sony one. I sold that for $750 a while ago, but these microphones were in the bag, so I decided to put them separately. Just got one, I'm sorry, 175 is what I got for that. I don't remember if that was an offer, if that was full price. Sold this Apple power adapter. I, got, I took an offer for 20 bucks. I think I paid like 3.99 or 4.99 just a couple of days ago. Did I buy this in Milwaukee? I don't remember. It was on a video, so I bought it recently. Next, we've got these. Can you see those up there? Let me see if I can get them down with one hand without breaking anything. <laughs> well, that didn't work. So, hopefully I didn't break anything. This is a flight pilot training course, or parts of it. I don't think this is the full course. Uh, it's, these all look like they're the exact same tape. So there are a handful of those. Then there's this tape here, and a book. And then uh, an order catalog or order form. I took an offer, 25 shipped for all of this stuff. It will go media mail though, so it's gonna be like three bucks or so, three to five dollars. By the way, I checked every single tape. I did not break any of them, thankfully. Next, we've got Disney Brave. Sold this for $7.99. Uh, I was listing a couple of Disney Blu-rays, which sold and did pretty well, and I took a picture of this one too, thinking this would be worth a couple bucks. Uh, it wasn't, but I already the picture's done, so I figured I'd list it. Uh, came in a storage unit, got $7.99. I'll probably walk away with like two or three bucks for it. Still on this shelf, we've got this Hanes repair manual. Again, it'll go medium mail, so it'll, it'll cost like two to three dollars. I got $9.99 for it. Uh, let's see. Oh, down here. Sold this. Uh, I picked this up in Milwaukee on Friday. I mentioned it Sunday, I think the video you saw this morning, where I made a mistake. I thought this was going to be worth like $300. Uh, the ones that are selling for that have the CD player as well. I listed it for $75, I think, matching the other person that had it listed. Took an offer for $49, so I probably lost about $10 on it because I paid $45. But a $10 loss isn't too bad for a mistake, especially for how quickly it sold. I picked these up on Friday as well. I think I paid $3.99, $4.99, somewhere in that range. This is Major League Gaming headset. Apparently that's a thing. It's an Astro A40 gaming headset. Uh, sold for $79.99. All right, next we've got a remote. Is this it? There it is, the SL20, I think. Let me go double check. If it is... I picked this up just within the past week or so at Goodwill. Sold pretty quick. RBSL20, that would be it. Sold for $12.99. I sold one of these for $24.99. Uh, test strips, diabetic test strips. They are in date. Uh, good until the end of November of this year. These are okay to sell on eBay. In fact, there's a whole industry around buying these. You'll see signs around town saying, buying diabetic test strips. Uh, found these in a storage unit. I got $24.99, and I have two boxes left to sell. Now, the last item, everyone says I'm going to lose money and this stuff isn't going to sell at all. Well, it's not the last item. There's one more after that. Everyone says I'm going to lose money, not going to make anything on it. It's not going to sell, but I sold, within less than 24 hours, a pair of those cleats. I got $49.99 shipped. Well, they shouldn't cost too much to ship. I don't know where they're going. It would be... These guys. Uh, so, considering I paid 10 bucks for this, they sold for 
I should walk away with between 30 and $35 after shipping and fees, depending on the cost to ship. And uh, yeah, that's not bad, tripling my money. Hopefully they all sell like that. And the last sale was two of these Kohler valve stems. Uh, $14.99 each, they bought two of them. So it's 23, or wow, I can't do math, $29.98. Uh, I'm showing you the screen so I can point out KO3. So now we're gonna take a walk back here and find box three. And from there, I should be able to dig it out. That's how I've got these sorted. And this is 321 is the last four of the last three digits. 321, there we go. 104, 5, 3, 2, 1. 104, 5, 3, 2, 1. Oddly, they bought two of these. These are both counterclockwise. Usually, you would want a clockwise and a counterclockwise. That's why it says cold. Your cold water is counterclockwise. Your hot water is clockwise. So hopefully, I don't get one of these returned. Since this is such a short video, I decided might as well show you how I pack this stuff up to ship it. Garage Flips does this from time to time. People seem to like it. First things first, we're going to do these valve stems. I am going to wrap them in a little bit of bubble wrap just because they are a little heavy. I don't know how fragile they are. There we go. Take one of these little eBay boxes. It is the six by four by four. I don't use these often, but they do come in handy once in a while. We'll slap that in there. And then, throw a piece of tape on here. Easy peasy. It weighed 10 ounces. Because it was under a pound, and for that reason only, I shipped it first class. Cost me $4.06. I almost said $4.06 seconds. Anyways, it was under a pound. Anytime it's under a pound, I always go first class unless it's a higher value item or the buyer wants me to get it shipped to them much quicker. Next is the Fossil Wallet, sent to a viewer. Very simple. We're gonna throw it in bubble wrap, toss in a card. Viewers get those. And wrap it up. Good to go. That was 11 ounces, so again, under a pound, went first class, cost me 388. Next one up, gonna be the remote. Basically the same story. If you notice, I use these really oversized bubble mailers. It's so I can fold it over a couple of times and uh, give it added protection without having to waste my time bubble wrapping. It may cost a little bit more, but it's more efficient. And then next, we're gonna do this charger. Now this, even folding it over a couple of times, isn't enough, I don't think. So I am going to wrap this up in a couple of sheets of bubble wrap. Now I don't tape my bubble wrap, I use stretch wrap. If you ever order anything online, it comes bubble wrapped and taped. Sometimes it could be real pain to open it up. This makes it a little bit easier for the buyer to open it up. And it's also quicker than adding tape. I mean, that would take me a couple extra seconds. And every second counts. So we're just going to wrap this over a couple of times. And there we go. Good to go. Actually, I am don't normally do this. I'm going to throw a piece of tape on here because it kind of folded over on me. All right, good to go. The remote was four ounces, cost two seventy to ship. And the Apple power cable was 13 ounces. Cost 524 to ship. Again, both under pound, both went first class. Next, we've got this thing. This is the Major League Gaming headset, and I guess I forgot to take the price tag off. So for those wondering, $399 is what I paid. So for this one, I'm gonna put this in this 12 by 10 by 4 box. I go through these quite often. I'm just going to slap it right in the box. Uh, the case gives it a decent amount of protection. You're not gonna break this thing. 
and uh, it's like the exact same size as the box, so I don't need any void fill. Good to go. That was a hair under two pounds, like one pound, 15.4 ounces. So I shipped at the one to two pound rate, priority mail. Anything over a pound usually goes priority mail. Uh, it did not fit in a regional A box and it was too light to make it worth going in a medium flat rate box. It cost 870, I think. It was eight something. Now we're gonna do this guy. We're gonna pack it up in this box because this is a nice big box for it. We don't wanna to go too small because this thing is collectible. We wanna make sure it's well protected. I'm actually not sure what size this box is. It's the box 121 if you used to work at Toys R Us. I got a whole bunch of these from Toys R Us when they closed and it's actually a nice size box. All right, now I'm gonna wrap it in bubble wrap. I am all tangled up. And this is one we're going to use a little bit of tape. But when I use tape, I just pull a little, eh, uh, uh, now you can see, a little tiny piece off. Because all it needs to do is hold the bubble wrap in place. It doesn't need to seal it and make it impossible for the buyer. The reason I'm using tape and not using stretch wrap is just because it's uh, a bigger item, a lot more difficult to stretch wrap. This corner is kind of exposed. All right, drop it in the box. Now you can see there's a lot of space left in the box. I've got a solution for that. Air pillows. I've actually got a machine that makes these. It cost me like $1,800 a few years ago and it was worth every penny. But obviously, if you don't want to go and spend $1,800 on a machine like this, save the ones you get from ordering things online, or just use paper. You can use craft paper just as well. So we'll get some in there, and then run across, and we are good to go. It is well protected. And this, I can already tell you, is gonna go priority mail. Let's weigh it. It was two pounds, six ounces, cost 11, 13, 10 to ship all the way to California. It's not fun shipping stuff to California. So next, we are going to do the shoes. We'll start off with another one of these same boxes, the 121. And then we're gonna set this aside because I'm gonna make these shoes look pretty. We wanna make them look nice and presentable. So we're going to lay out the tissue paper as you would see if you bought these new in the store or something like that. And then we'll drop it in here. Oh, you know, that might fit in another box. Let me try another box. We're gonna try the 12 by 10 by four because it looks like it might be tight. Oh, so we might have a winner here. I do this from time to time. Try a different box. Because with, oops, with a smaller box, if it fits in here, oh, it looks like it's gonna be perfect. Hold on. The lid's caught. Oh, just a little off. But you know what? We're gonna seal it like this anyway because it, it's a shoe box. It's not gonna get hurt. It's already kind of beat up. So I'm gonna take this piece of scrap cardboard and just shove it in the middle here. That way the shoes are no longer exposed. And we're gonna take it down. Throw another layer for good measure here. Angled across the back. Someone once taught me that a long time ago. That's the way to tape something. One straight across, one angled across. So the reason I wanted to go for a smaller box is because in a smaller box, this might ship cubic. 
So that box did not go cubic. It was a little too big. If you're wondering what I mean by cubic, go look at my video about pirateship.com, how to save money on shipping. I think I named it something like how to save a McDouble's worth of money or something like that. Uh, so it, cost, it was two pounds, eight ounces, cost $9.26 to ship, meaning after shipping and fees, that $10 investment 24 hours later turned into $33.37. Now we're going to do this stuff, this flight construction coursework. We're going to start out with, once again, the 12 by 10 by 4. And then we're just going to stack it all in there. We've got the book, and we'll grab this. Oh, this is a question and explanation. It's not an order form. I don't know why I thought that was an order form. And then we'll stack some tapes in here. Ooh, was it going to fit? Oh, it's a little tight, but we're good to go. We'll throw some air pillows in here to keep it from shifting around. And we are good to go. Now this is going to ship media mail. It's heavy. It's probably about five pounds. It's going to ship media mail because it is books and tapes. Media mail, you can ship books, tapes, movies on DVD, Blu-ray, etc. Um, what else? I think, don't quote me on this, I think you can ship sheet music. I may be wrong on that. Maybe you can't ship sheet music. I don't remember. Anyways, you, you go to the post office website, it says what you can and can't ship. You cannot ship video games, though. It is not always the cheapest rate. If you just have a single DVD, you're going to want to ship uh, first class. It's still going to be cheaper. But if you're shipping 20 DVDs, you're definitely going to want to go media mail. So it was five pounds, 10 ounces. It cost me $5.35 to ship. Next, we're gonna ship out this manual. This one's easy. We're just gonna put in a bubble mailer. I don't always put books in bubble mailers, but this one's already in kind of rough shape. And it's essentially a glorified magazine. It's uh, not gonna get hurt in here. If it were a hardcover book or something that sold for a little more than 10 bucks, I wouldn't do that. Uh, this actually feels pretty light. It might be able to go first class. That was just over a pound, but still only cost $3.27. Next, we're shipping out this DVD. Uh, by the way, that last one went medium mail. So we're going to slap it into here. Now, I do not trust the adhesive on these craft mailers, the ones made of paper. So I'll throw a piece of tape across that. The poly ones, the ones that are made of like this plastic, that I'm fine with. Those aren't coming off. So that's gonna be really light go first class. Next, we've got this Hot Wheels bowling shirt. So I am going to fold it up a little more nicely here, just so it uh, just looks a little bit better when the buyer opens it up. That is a little screwy. I am not a professional at folding clothing. Here, we wanna redo that a little bit because we don't wanna fold the patch over all right that looks nice now we're just gonna slip it right into here and this will probably go first class as well these i actually got a boxes thousands of these at yonkers when they closed for like nothing like 50 cents a box all right good to go let's weigh them and i'll let you know how much they cost so the shirt was 10 ounces, went first class, under a pound, $4.06, and the movie was four ounces, $2.76. Let's get these shipped out. I am gonna ship these in a box because I don't want this to get all crushed and crumbled. It might make that pop open. The buyer will think that it's not new. Who knows? We're gonna ship it in a box so it's protected a little better. Gonna use another one of these little eBay boxes. We're just not even going to bubble wrap it. In the box, it'll be fine. We're just going to toss it in. And let's throw one of these in. 
Oh, is that gonna fit? Yeah, that'll fit. And then we will seal it up. There we go, and this thing is definitely gonna be under four ounces. It was, in fact, four ounces, cost 270 to ship. Next, we've got these two microphones. First thing I'm going to do is toss them in one of these boxes because I don't want someone to be trying to cut something open with a knife and uh, cut this little cable. So I think this should fit. Oh yeah, that fits. So I'm gonna put these in here with just a little bit of crinkled up paper because I don't want to bubble wrap it because if someone tries to cut it with a knife, they could easily cut that cord. So we'll throw it in with some paper. And then just a little piece of tape on there. All right. And I'm gonna use one of these padded flat rate mailers. Uh, because it is a higher value item, I'm not shipping it first class, I'm gonna ship it priority mail. That way it gets to the buyer a little bit quicker. And I'll just seal this up. And it should be like $7 and something cents. And it was $7.55. So that is how I shipped those 13, yeah, I think 13, 14, I don't remember. That's how I shipped those orders out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I was able to drag it out a little bit longer so it wasn't too short by doing that. Maybe I'll do that some more in the future until tomorrow probably because I've been doing these daily. See ya.